Welcome back. Robert Taylor here uh, with another tutorial over landscapes. So last week, or last time I should say, uh, which was probably last week by the time you see this video, um, we went over changing the colors, making it to where it looks like this. Now some of you may be thinking this doesn't look all that glamorous. I promise by the time we're done, if you remember the first video, this will look great. I do it this way so that you understand how the math works. We will be controlling it through other masks when it comes to other materials like grass and dirt or snow. But this is just an excellent way to showcase it. So when we left off, I uh, told everyone that it would be best if they were to fix the, fix the name convention and sort everything into their own groups and do the sort priority. I went ahead and did the same. Um, I went ahead and put 1.0. Uh, that way the rock textures always show up first. And I put the master UV um, in there as well since it directly correlates with these. And then I went with the albedo color alterations, which is just the basic, you know, color tint and influence brightness, contrast, and desaturation. Then <coughs> I went with the landscape color alteration, so this beautiful massive color differences here. The pattern and in the order in which everything is done is completely up to you guys as long as you're able to read it and understand it. What's important is that you guys choose a naming convention and a way to do this in a way that you best understand. So this week, or this episode, we are going to go over roughness, specular, normal, and ambient occlusion. So I'm sure as you can see here, there's a bit of a shine here. And I don't know about you, but the landscape doesn't usually shine like this. There are certain situations in which it does, and it usually means it's wet. And we're going to go over altering those to remove the shine. <coughs> so to do that, first we're going to take care of the roughness, which is the green channel. Now I have here all of my maths. I'll go over everything in a second. First things first, I'm going to put it in here. Green channel is where the roughness at. That's where the, why the R is there. So for specular, specular is essentially the opposite of roughness. That's how it works. So that's the one minus node. Specular and roughness can utilize the same uh, information, just in opposites. That's why I'm deriving it from roughness specifically. Uh, then I have a power node for the specular contrast. Um, so it'll <coughs> make the wetness look, look different when it's wet. Um, the maximum specular value I currently have at zero. Uh, if it was at one, it would look like the landscape was covered in puddles. A giant puddle, I should say, not puddles. And I put that into a multiply, at which point I put it into a lerp between the normal roughness and the math I've done and do the specular ratio. Just more fine tuning and strength over the specular. And then for roughness, I just do a multiply. That's all I need. This is essentially this. But specular and roughness. That's how it works. I'll come over here. <coughs> I went into here before we started and I added specular and I dragged it up. Now it's important to note when I drag specular above normal, this normal stayed in the specular. I'll show you what I mean. If I drag normal up, the pen stayed, but now it's specular. So you need to make sure when you make these changes that you move the necessary pins around to ensure that you have the right math, uh, the right map set up. So this is the roughness. So I'll put this in the roughness. This is specular. I'll put this in the specular. With everything at zero and one, 
we should see a significant change here where everything is shiny. So I'll hit save. <coughs> the sheen and the shine is gone. It's just a flat bit of color. Now why is this? Generally speaking, if you don't put any information in, uh, in it outside of, you know, maybe the maps, everything stays at 0.5. Point five. Now, because of everything I've done here, things are a little more um, extreme. But again, that's to have more control and strength over it. But as you can see, an even stronger shine has showed up at this point because I'm deriving the specular from the roughness instead of just it creating the specular out of thin air. So why would we want this shine? Like I said, if it's raining, it's shiny, that's what happens. If I put you to one, and we start looking at this, let me make, minimize this a bit, make this easier. So at zero, there's nothing. <coughs> However, things are starting to look wet. Now if I come here to roughness and I move it to zero, it's just one giant puddle. To make this easier to notice, I'll change the scale to 10. Maybe even higher. Interesting that it's not changing it. Let's save so that it does make it bigger. Oh, right, that's why. I've already changed it here. Because I have this ticked, it's not going to work. There we go. So you can see it's starting to look very shiny and wet. Which is pretty cool. Now if I come back over here and I change this contrast to zero, it looks even more so. The contrast is just to help. I put this to zero. Nothing really is happening. It changes it even more. So it's just literally to add more control over them. It may not look like much most of the time, but I promise it certainly is helpful. What might help even more now that I think about it is if I do this right here sorry doing a quick change there we go that way it's not taking the unaltered data to lerp it so it looks even more wet. That's the, what the problem was. And if I come back here to one, the wetness is gone. But it looks brighter. And that's only because this needs to be put to zero. Because these two correlate with each other. If this is one and this is zero, it's dry. If this is one and this is zero, it's wet. And then you, I can mess with the um, math in between. <coughs> so that, ladies and gentlemen, is roughness and specular. Glad I saw my math mistake. Next, we shall go over normals. So normals are cool. I love normals. I love me some normals. Let me change this back to one so that it doesn't go nutso down the road. So as you can tell, it looks kind of 3D. And obviously, once you're right next to it, it's definitely flat. Now, I myself don't utilize any type of trickery or math to fix that. Um, I know with virtual height maps, they're working on it. 
Um, it's just not something that's high on my priority list because they remove tessellation and whatnot. So once virtual height maps actually look good and actually aren't buggy, I'll certainly add a tutorial in for that. But for now, I do all of my 3D appearances texturally. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we come over here to the normal, as you can see, most of the normal is blue. <clears throat> so these parts are the flat parts. They don't, uh, th these parts don't quote unquote move when you alter the normals. But that's only because that's how I've chosen to do it. Um, you could do the normal intensity using just the blue, but it would make the, uh, it, it creates a weird effect. It doesn't look normal, doesn't look natural. Uh, so I've chosen to append, so that brings the RNG back together, and then multiply those by this. Let me change this back to one so that it doesn't just look crazy out of the blue. And then, once I've multiplied it, I append the blue channel back in, and we'll come on up over here. And I'll put this in the normal. So the work is done. <clears throat> Save it. Wait for it to do its thing. You won't see any changes. Everything looks identical. And that's because the normal intensity is set to 1, which is normal. If we go to 0, it's as if there's no normal whatsoever. It's flat. This helps to show how things work. So if I went negative 1, now it's going in, uh, in the opposite direction, which can work if you so choose, but with how I utilize ambient occlusion, I'll be showing that in a minute, it would then start looking weird. So stick it with one, if I go with two, now it looks even more 3D. Three, even more so. It's looking more like it's not flat. And that's what, it, what we want, because we hide the flatness utilizing static meshes and eventually virtual height maps so when once those that is working properly um, it's something Unreal Engine is still working on so that are the is the normals so next like I said I alter ambient occlusion now generally speaking you can't really alter ambient occlusion if I were to put this math that I'm going to show you in the ambient occlusion line, nothing would change, nothing would happen. Ambient occlusion is just cool math that the world and the light does to help improve the 3D look of things. So what I do is I add the ambient occlusion math, the image, to the color. What? Yes. So first, I get the ambient occlusion. I'll click on this because I still want the ambient occlusion there. Put it into base. And then take the color, put it into the multiply, and place it in there. Sorry, had that ridiculous. We'll keep it at zero for the moment so that there are no changes when we're done. Hit save. Let it do its thing. And here we are, back in the world. Now let's see what happens. It's more noticeable in things like grass and dirt, less so here on rocks. So I'll have to go more into the extremes in some cases. With it. But when I tap one, it got a little darker in certain places and it's continuing to do so. So now, it looks even more 3D with a combination of altering the normals and adding the ambient occlusion and altering that within the base color 
you get this extremely amazing 3D effect. Now obviously once you're right next to it, it doesn't look like that. But it serves its purpose, especially on cliff faces that the character cannot get on. In most camera angles, they'll never notice. It, it's not enough to notice the difference. So, that I have now showed you how to modify the ambient occlude, uh, occlusion, the roughness, the specular, and the normal. World position offset, which is holding the height information, is utilized differently uh, in a different way, and I'll show that down the road. I personally don't use it uh, because it's um, extremely expensive on how it's utilized but some people enjoy it so I will show how to make it work uh, down the road when we start working with layers not just a single material um, so n thank you you guys for watching um, I know this one was a bit on the shorter side but I'm certainly glad I was able to teach you and show you a few things uh, next video we will start going over various anti-tiling methods um, I will show you how certain ones work. Um, I will point you in the direction of um, other anti-tiling methods that other people utilize uh, because uh, that's a lot of work for me to show you something that I don't do. That way if you prefer, prefer those methods for anti-tiling you can utilize them. The reason for the anti-tiling that I use is so that when I use RVT things work flawlessly. I've got nothing else I have to do but plug in RVT, no problems. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and next time we will go over anti-tiling. Have a good one.